Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on channels of television. A quick reminder of our top stories now. Protesting workers shot National Assembly complex over unpaid wages. They want National Assembly leaders to pay their emoluments or forfeit their legislative sitting. President Muhammad Buhari restates commitment to rescuing remaining Chibok girls, says that Nigeria will welcome any kind of support from any quarters to make this happen. And police in Cross River State dispel rumor of deaths from manual clashes, in communal clashes rather, in some communities in the state, as the federal government calls for an end to violence. And France postpones fuel tax hike for six months following weeks of violent protests across major cities. ChannelCV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channel TV and Channel 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. And here are some of the pictures you sent to our portals. And this image is from Festac Town in Amor Dauphin, Lagos State, showing an illegal dump site. Our eyewitness reporter is asking uh, responsible agencies to do something very quickly about it. And next is this photo from Agbara in Ogun State, showing two fallen containers on the middle of the road. Our eyewitness reporter is asking that it be removed to avoid traffic jam or accidents. A steal from Agbara in Ogun State is this picture of a bad road. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the state government to fix it and other roads adjoining Ogun and Lagos State. We do sincerely thank you for sending us those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. As the 2019 general elections draw closer, migrants living in Lagos have been remanded to keep away from the electoral process in the country as they are not eligible to participate. The Comptroller of Immigration Service, Lagos Command, Eke Pedeme King, said, that, said this at a meeting with non-Nigerians while conveying the message of the Comptroller General to them. He also explains that the sensitization will continue at a local government level. Migrants, that is non-Nigerians, do not participate in the electoral process and we believe it is like that all over the world. Um, so today's meeting is to um, synergize with you so that you are able to pass this message on to your compatriots that they must not participate in the electoral process. They should not allow themselves to be used to vote either by inducement or any other form and they should not allow themselves to be used as thugs. So when it comes to the elections, they must keep away from the process. And that is the message I have from my controller general. I would like to appreciate the cooperation you have given us so far. And I really want to believe, and I know for sure because of the cooperation that has existed, that you are going to um, pass this message on to your compatriots. We are going to continue at the local government levels to enlighten and to sensitize um, the migrants and the non-Nigerians as to what they can do and cannot do. You're watching the news at 10 live from Lagos. Let's quickly shift our gears now, shall we, to our Buja studios where Terry Kumi is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Terry. Hi, Gimba. Nice to see you. Welcome to Abuja. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has asked the United Kingdom to extradite Nigerians who have looted the country's commonwealth but are hiding in the UK, especially the former Petroleum Minister, Diaziani Alison Madwiki. Mr. Magu says the commission has secured a number of temporary and permanent forfeiture of properties and various sums of money unlawfully acquired by persons of questionable character with the most recent being the final forfeiture of 1.9 billion naira from a commercial bank to the federal government. Mr. Magu was speaking at an interactive session with media practitioners and members of the civil society in Lagos today. 
He says the EFCC has recorded 246 convictions from January till November 30th, 2018, but declined to comment on the bribery allegations trailing the governor of Kano State, as he insisted that the issue was already in court. On the forthcoming general elections, the EFCC boss said the commission is already working with the National Orientation Agency and the Independent National Electoral Commission to deal with issues of vote buying. We are on it. It has taken too long for an investigation over three and a half years. It doesn't happen in this era of uh, digital banking and uh, artificial intelligence. There are so many things that can be done for one to conclude, particularly financial crimes investigation. So it doesn't make sense. So we are, we are really bent on. We are, we are already in court. We have obtained a warrant of arrest. We are making effort to place her on the red notice at the Interpol level. And we, are, we, have had, we had a meeting with the UK authority over her extradition. We are also demanding for the extradition of other Nigerians who are hiding there, other political exposed persons or other looters. And we insist that uh, the proceed of the loot that the money recovered and the properties recovered must be sold and repatriated back to this country. Justice Daniel Longji of the Plateau State High Court has reserved a ruling till December the 13th on the admissibility of the bank documents tendered by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission against former Plateau State Governor Jonah Jank and Yusuf Gyang Pam, a former cashier with the Plateau State Government. At the resumed hearing today, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission presented its third prosecution witness, an assistant manager in the marketing department of the bank, where the state government operates an account in the office of the secretary to the state government, as well as that of cabinet and special services. Prosecution counsel Rotimi Jacobs, in the course of cross-examining the witness, tendered a document signed by the compliance department of the bank with a prayer that it be admitted in the prosecution of the suspects. But the defense counsel, Michael Zekome, opposed the accept acceptability of the document, arguing that they appear to be original on the surface but no foundation was laid by the prosecution team as to why the prosecution witness will tender a document to which he is not a signatory. Former Governor Jang and Gyang Pam are accused of misappropriating state funds to the tune of 6.3 billion naira. Meanwhile, counsel to former Governor Jang, Mr. Michael Zekome, also explains the position of his client on the allegations of another property traced to the former governor by the EFCC. It is not possible, like I always say, they are engaged in media trial. For example, if you look at today's newspapers, you will see where they are saying that they traced the property worth 500 million naira to him. There's nothing like that. They are saying by their own evaluation. There's nothing like that. There's nothing in the, in the charges here that relates to that at all. So it is just to embarrass the former governor, David Jonah Jang by putting his case in the public domain even when we are already here. And you cannot tell a person that you are prosecuting by yourself using your own counsel to again report to your office on the same day that your matter, which you are prosecuting, which you personally fix through your counsel, is coming up. So I personally wrote on behalf of my government chambers to the FCC to say, Jonah Jang cannot honor that invitation. Meanwhile, Justice Valentine Ashi of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, sitting in the Apo area of Abuja, has ordered the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the Department of State Services, and all the security agencies to arrest Deziani Alison Madwiki, former Minister of Petroleum Resources, within 72 hours. When it comes to public buildings in Nigeria, so much emphasis is placed on aesthetics and infrastructure, while maintenance takes the back seat. To tackle this, the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing has launched the first ever draft national public buildings maintenance policy. The permanent secretary in the ministry explains that the policy is to ensure that public buildings continue to serve their intended purposes and guarantee safety for users. Our correspondent, Kayla Megua, 
reports. Building collapse has become a reality Nigerians live with, a situation which causes the loss of lives and poor performance of infrastructural assets. And it is to address these issues that the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing has come up with the country's first ever policy document on public building maintenance. The essence of the policy is to ensure that public buildings continue to serve their intended purposes for longer period, as well as guarantee safety, healthy and comfortable usage. The document is equally expected to provide effective means of addressing challenges and shortcomings associated with public building maintenance culture in Nigeria. Public buildings are a significant investment of taxpayers' money, and their preservation is necessary for the overall development of the country. The question then becomes, why did it take so long to come up with a policy that ensures their maintenance? Uh, there's no one holistic document uh, treating uh, public building maintenance policy in Nigeria. This is the first of its kind. With this review, you can see that the I's uh, will be dotted and the T's will cross the T's. Because one thing that is so significant and important in public policy making is the level of information you gather while you are making the policy. So we are taking a holistic approach to ensuring that the policy will be all uh, you know, inclusive. Stakeholders at the event speak on what the maintenance policy seeks to achieve and their expectations after this two-day workshop. The first step is really to have a policy document. I think when we started this process with the ministry, one of the things we noticed was there were several attempts. We, we kept finding documents in people's drawer, several attempts to really tackle maintenance of assets. And, and nothing was ever done to a policy stage. So at least we have, this is a good stage. I mean, at least it's a good step. We have a draft policy document. People are here to edit, to put their input. The federal government says they are aspiring to have a well-planned process of maintenance of their buildings across the country. And the usual tradition of quick fixing or the negligence of minor faults till they reach points of total deterioration is stopped. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, Meccano International Limited signs partnership with German power generator firm MTU On-Site Energy to deliver more reliable independent gas power plant projects in Nigeria. That's on Business News. Join us again.